Hey, look at me. I'm a little office worker and I work on my i3 and I haven't even got an SSD. <laughs> Get this guy out of here. Get him out of here. Today we're building the kind of office PC for a stud. The kind of office PC for people who get things done, okay? We're going to be like Bradley Cooper from Limitless. We're going to be getting so much productivity done because this is an absolute beast. I repeat, it's an absolute beast of productivity. And it's going to be totally silent as well. How are you going to do such a thing? How are you going to get high-end stuff? How are you going to get it to be completely silent? Wow, well, I'll tell you what. Today we are working with the Noctua NHP1 Passive Fanless Cooler. And from the spec on the Noctua website, it looks like it's going to be able to cool pretty, pretty nicely. And even for some high-end stuff without any fans required, it's going to be a fun one. But before we get into that, we are got to talk about today's sponsor. And as always, today we are sponsored by jcpccustoms.com. Uh, we are a UK-based, you know, boutique kind of system integrator. So you can pick up some really, really nicely put together PCs. For instance, the one that you're seeing in the video today is a custom commission, but we've also got loads of pre-builds ready with really good, like, balanced specifications. You can configure your own, or you can just get in touch for a bespoke quote. And if you live in the UK, at least on the mainland, we can pretty much ship to you anywhere. So it's going to be a pretty sweet deal if you check out jcpccustoms.com. But not only that, um, we've actually got a couple of video cards up for sale at, I'm not going to call them good prices, but not horrendous prices. So um, at the time of recording, we've got a 3060 Ti for like 539, I think, and a 3060 for like 439 or something. So not amazing prices, but probably cheaper than the scalpers out there. And of course, you know, being a business, I've got to make a little bit of profit. I'm not making loads of money on these, um, but they're there if you want to check them out. Um, so yes, jcpccustoms.com. What else is there to say? High build quality. Um, we've just got really good reviews. It's just me doing them. So you know you're going to get a personalized experience. You've not got any kind of production lines or cut corners or anything like that. All put together with care. Um, high quality with a great reputation. What more could you want? So go and check out jcpccustoms.com and we will roll on with the video right now. So I guess just like all of our videos, we're going to be checking out the spec of what we're putting together today. As we said, it's a productivity machine. Um, so this isn't going to be to do with having great gaming performance or anything like that. The key tenets are something that is very reliable, something that is going to last a long time, and something that is high performance for doing just general work that's just not going to slow down. Um, and we had a decent sized budget here so we could get a really nice spec. So let's go through it from the top. We have the Intel i9-10900F, a 10-core 20-thread processor, and that's just absolutely baller, isn't it, for an office PC? You're not really going to get much better than this. And the reason I chose the 10900F and not the K is one for the price, but also the TDP is a lot lower on the F SKUs because you can lock them to 65 watts. Um, and that's going to come in really nicely because we're doing a passively cooled CPU using this CPU cooler, which is the Noctua NHP1 fanless cooler. Um, and now you can't be running you know, the top end 10900Ks and Ryzen 9s on these uh, passive coolers, at least not with significant um, like hamstringing of the performance. But with 10900F, because of that low TDP, this is going to be really, really nice. Um, and I have absolutely no doubts about this cooling it adequately, because the size of this heatsink is absolutely massive. So those are kind of the headline parts there, but we've also got the other components that are going to be very important. We went for the MSI B460 Tomahawk. The reason for that is it's a decently priced ATX B460 board and it's just got great build quality. Uh, the VRM heat sinks are really good so it's not going to be getting stressed out at all and that's going to help with the longevity of the machine. For the memory, we went for 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 speed. Of course, it'll only run at 3000 speed on a B460, um, but having 32 gigabytes of RAM um, is going to be really nice because if you've got loads of tabs open and you're doing lots of academic work, that RAM is just going to be so nice because you know when you go in between all those little tabs, it's just going to be really snappy and very instantaneous rather than having to wait for them to load back in again, um, especially when you're going for the i9 and going for a nice premium um, build. There's really no point um, getting less than 32 gigabytes of RAM. 
For the storage, we have a Kingston A2000 250GB NVMe SSD. There's no need to go PCIe 4, not that this board would support it anyway, especially for office tasks. PCIe Generation 4 is really only for you know people with unlimited budgets or people that do a lot of um, heavy video editing. Really, most people will be fine with the regular Gen 3 NVMe SSD, even for gaming. But the reason we went for the Kingston A2000 is because it's got a DRAM buffer inside it, which means it's going to help with a bit of the performance, especially as that drive fills up a little bit. Um, 250 gig is going to be plenty for any programs that they want to install. Um, in reserve, we also have a 2 terabyte hard drive. Now, I know that's not going to help with the silent nature of the PC, but they needed some mass storage and it didn't make any much sense for us to waste a lot of money on a 2 terabyte NVMe. So we went for a 2 terabyte Western Digital Blue hard drive, but we deliberately went for a 5400 RPM because that's a nice slow turning hard drive that's not going to be as loud inside the case. The graphics card, we have the MSI GT 1030. Um, not because they want to play any games, but mainly because this one well, has the ability to output um, 4K uh, 60, but it's also got one HDMI and one display port, um, so you can connect two 1080p monitors to it, absolutely no problem. The reason we didn't want to go with the integrated graphics on something like a 10900 is because it's a bit uncertain about um, what kind of resolutions it's going to support when there's multiple monitors, so that's why we went for the GT1030. And it's also passive as well, so there's no fan on this graphics card, which is, again, going to help us with that, keeping it all really nice and quiet. And because it's quite low profile, if you want to add more displays in the future, you just slot another GT1030 in the slot underneath um, and it'll be absolutely fine. For the case, we used the <laughs> the appropriately named Silentium PC Ventum VT4V Evo TG. That is such a bad name. Like, it, the case manufacturers, just think of a better name. Like, Game Max has got the right idea. They've got names for all of theirs, same as Fractal. Um, don't just give us a load of old jumbled code like this because it makes it really hard to remember. Um, but the reason I chose this case is because it was pretty well priced. Um, it's mesh, um, so that means there's going to be plenty of passive airflow going through the PC, which is going to help. It's also got a glass side panel. You know, take it or leave it. Um, that's fine. And it's deep enough to accommodate the cooler as well. Nothing particularly special about this case. It just happened to be a good price and with good features. The power supply we chose was the Fractal Ion Plus 560 watt platinum rated power supply. The reason we chose platinum is because it's going to mean that you're going to have very good um, power efficiency from this machine and also that the fan is not going to be turning very much at low loads at all, again keeping that noise all the way down. For the operating system, Windows 10 Pro, obviously, and if you need Windows 10 Pro license key, I've got an affiliate link in the description. It's like 12 quid or something. It's pretty sweet. For the Wi-Fi, we added a QD uh, AX3000, I think it is. It's a very good Wi-Fi adapter. It's one that I found on Amazon, and it's got the well, like the highest rated um, uh, chip, I think, inside it. So it's going to give you plenty of future-proofing in terms of networking. The fans are just four 120mm black fans that I had around. Um, we're going to be setting these up, though, so that they only really turn on when the CPU is getting really hot. Um, because we want to try and keep this as quiet as possible so we're only really going to have those fans on when when they're really really needed so you might be thinking after this uh, parts list isn't this a bit much for an office pc isn't this a bit overkill and actually yeah it absolutely is overkill but the philosophy behind this is we're paying you know maybe a thousand pounds now but this PC is going to be like an 8-10 to 10 year PC because we've chosen lots of very, very solid parts that are just not going to break. For instance, like we could have gone with a liquid cooler, but why do that when you've got a, a, a passive cooler? It doesn't even have a fan on it. So there's very few points of failure on this machine because we've invested in very good quality parts. And that's kind of the philosophy that we've got here. And it's just something that's just not going not gonna to break a sweat even if you've put a load of rubbish programs on it. So that's the parts list. Let's just win me, win me, wham, wham, wazzle. Might show you a bit of the uh, the Noctua installation and then a bit of a build tage, and then we will uh, reconnect after the build. See you then.
is finished and do you know what? It actually doesn't look it actually looks pretty good, I think. It doesn't look bad at all. I mean that heatsink is absolutely huge. It's just like this big like boom, here's the heatsink, you know? Um but it does the job. It really does do the job. It's it's so simple but so well designed that is just that's knocked you all over though isn't it just very good quality i was really impressed with the cooling and um, we'll get some cooling results up in a minute but first i would actually like to show you how this thing got on in fortnite because i was like this got a gt1030 i'm sure it could probably play some fortnite so yeah let's roll some fortnite on the screen um, and as you can see um, if you run it on directx 11 it really does struggle when Anything under 60 frames per second to me isn't playable. But then if you change it to the performance mode API and then restart the game, actually you can get some playable frame rates out of it. So maybe if they've got a couple of you know, the kids over or whatever and they want to play a game, yeah, you can actually, it's viable. It's not a really good experience, but you know, it's it's okay. It's okay. Um, so there you go. Let's get those temperature results up on screen now. Um, so let's talk about obviously the processor, uh, the temperature test. We use Prime 95, so this is a real like, let's absolutely pin this CPU and let's pin the memory to really try and load up as much as we can. And the maximum temperature it reached was 89 degrees. Now you might think 89 is really high, but actually for Prime 95, <laughs> This is pretty much a bog standard result and I've had 360mm liquid coolers, all of that kind of stuff and they always end up being about 90 degrees. So this is really really good sign. The equilibrium temperature which is sort of you know ignoring the big spikes that you get with Prime 95 in temperature was 84 degrees and that is a, maybe a little bit higher than um, liquid coolers and other kinds of active air coolers but it's not that much more and this is absolutely, a, I think this is an act a big big result basically um, and I was very very impressed with how it was able to deal with such an insane load because as I said this is completely unrealistic load and it handled it absolutely beautifully so I cannot complain there at all. Um, the fans on the PC are only really set to come on after it's reached about 85 degrees so you're not really getting very much assistance from the case fans either so this is pretty much purely passive and I'm very very impressed with how that got on there. We also did the uh, video card temperature test as well just to see what um, what that would be like but again this video card is not being stressed really in any situation but just as a matter of testing it out for stability our maximum temperature is 83 degrees and do you know what for a passive card that is absolutely fine um, I've had um, a couple of 5700 XT's before and they go up to like 87 degrees C uh, especially that mech OC, that's a really bad vert. Don't ever buy a mech version, M-E-C-H version of any Radeon graphics cards because they're just horrible. Um, so yeah, I was pretty happy with that. I was happy with the result all in. I think this is just a PC that will last you 8 to 10 years, absolutely no problem. And even probably a little bit further still because we've chosen very, very high-end components. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Something a bit different not a gaming PC for once, um, just to show that there is a bit of variety in what I do. Um, if you've got any more um, comments or ideas for any other videos that you'd like to see, I'd love to see them in the comments because I love seeing your comments and uh, and having a chat in there. Please like the video. Oh, I'm not even. I can't even bother. Just you know, do the YouTube stuff. Anyway, um, catch you in the next video. Concept Soup saying goodbye. Bye bye.